we will start today with user security group user based security group so now we understood that <clears throat> when we have a role right and it is enabled for an organization but when we have a user based security group that actually works on tenant level so when you have such user security groups which works on tenant level now what do we do in that scenario so as i gave you an example right that when you have uh, you know certain situations where you want that your um organization which you have basically needs to have a security administrator or system administrator and those processes are very important why because you need somebody who can take control of the tenant it is not possible that you don't give the control to anybody someone in the organization should be a security administrator now that person is a very important person so if i have to create such security group the task is same create security group so this is my task and then you have type of tenanted security group so let's say i have user based security group right now it is there and let's say i'll put something like wle7 underscore sys or i'll say security administrator okay this is the name i have put and i know the spelling is always there. you know somewhere or the other i make a mistake Okay, security admin. Now, in the user-based security, there is no role assignation. Guys, you see, it says administered by security group. Now, what does that mean? Because we are making a user-based security which does not work on organization level, so we cannot assign a role. But this also has to be controlled by somebody you know it's it is not possible that you know I, i'll just go ahead and give the complete freedom they can do any changes they can make any changes right so by default what we do there is a workday security administrator default role not role but security group okay and that security group is the custodian of the workday tenant so we always make sure that that particular security administrator is able to manage this security group if they are also not able to manage then whoever has been assigned this security group right they will have all the powers and we don't want to give that so this is how a user based security group is created so by default the security administrator role is there and i'm going to go ahead and assign that so that they can administer or manage this particular security group now whoever will become the part of it they will have the same kind of permissions but you will have to assign it now how will you assign it the same way how you assign the permissions on role based security and then we will also see how will you assign the permission on business process security policy that also we will see but the permission assignation will work exactly the same way guys if you are giving permissions of functional area pick that functional area give view and modify all the permissions because this is a security administrator profile right so you can give any permissions there is no restrictions as such okay so you choose the functional area maybe personal data i'm just giving you an example because we have seen that right in real time scenario this is done by the security administrator see what did i say 
when you get the workday from workday team right they do the initial uh, implementation and give the tenant back to you correct that's yeah. how exactly it works so mm -hmm. in that case what happens you will go ahead and um get this particular security group which i've shown you the default mm -hmm. security administrator group okay mm -hmm. so someone will be a default security administrator mm -hmm. once he or she becomes a default security administrator they can go ahead and create those custom okay. groups okay now you see i have the complete folder what i'll do i'll just go ahead and give the permission of view and modify okay so again i'll go into edit permissions same way there is no change that's the reason i wanted to make sure you understand this okay i'm adding it here only you see this security administrator okay and i'm giving view and modify both okay earlier i gave only view now i'm going to go ahead and give the integration permissions also which is get and put because this is a security group which is responsible for doing any activity okay now i'll go ahead and click on okay and you see i still have that in yellow what does that mean i'll have to activate it otherwise it will not work okay, okay let it complete it is still processing yep then activate pending security policy changes confirm it and click on okay now it is ready okay so that user security group has got all the permissions to view and modify for the personal data so you go into any uh, functional area and you can go ahead and give the permissions directly there is no problem at all then i don't have anything more to add on this guys uh, you know um so we discussed the role based security group then we also discussed user based security group then we also understood how a role is created how a role based security group is created how do we assign it then finally once we have assigned the role how do we assign the permissions the similar way you we created a user based security group we understood the difference between constrained and unconstrained and a user based security group is always unconstrained because there is no limitation whatever permissions you are going to give it will be more like a you know view modify all the permissions so someone with that type of security group has got a very huge power in the tenant so you need some security groups to monitor or administer so by default the security administrator of the tenant is made the owner of that particular security group as well okay so this is how it works this is how the security functions now this was just about the data 